Hi guys, um, it's Kelly Jones here, and today we are going to work on drawing bubbles. And I'm going to show you two different kinds of bubbles. So first we're going to start with drawing the regular round bubbles. So for this project you're going to need some um, circles to trace, or you could just, uh, you know, wing it and go for it. But uh, you can get like various caps of things around your house that are different sizes, bowls, tubs, um, bottles of things, just so you have something round to go off of. Um, and it's best if you, you draw a couple of them overlapping and a couple of them off by their own and some going off the side of the page just for interest. Now you don't have to add this cute little elephant on the bottom. Um, in fact, you could add whatever you want uh, blowing the bubbles, or you could just ignore that part altogether and just draw the bubbles, okay? So basically what I want to talk to you about today is like how to do these awesome reflections and how when you have a bunch of bubbles or you have a bunch of like glass objects in a room, usually they have a, the same reflections like in the same place and that's because those reflections are coming from the light so if you have like a light coming from up here that light is going to reflect at the top of all these bubbles and if you have one over here it's going to reflect on this side and one over here is going to reflect on this side so you get my meaning so it looks more realistic if you give it similar reflections if you have multiple things going on like these bubbles okay um, so here's one example, and then you can either draw the elephant or not, it's up to you. Um, here's another instance where I've used bubbles before. Um, oops, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. So this I just did for fun. It was my uh, interpretation of Ariel from Little Mermaid. And she's just having fun blowing bubbles, like almost like she's trying bubble gum for the same time, at the same time, or at the first time, sorry. And, um, and so I did these bubbles and like, you could see that her, you could see her through it because they're, they're see-through, you know? And then I put, I put, um, what's the fish's name? I forgot, Flounder. I put Flounder and he's trying to blow the bubble, but he's accidentally, um, trapped, uh, the crab Sebastian in the bubble and he's not happy about it obviously <laughs> but anyway so but you can see like the reflections are on the top and this and they're all on the same side so you can kind of tell the light source would be coming from this side if it were a real photograph okay so since Valentine's Day is coming up um, if you want to do hearts that's totally fine and I will talk to you about how to do that one last thing I want you to see um, if you want to take that knowledge you get today and if you have some glass bottles or something glass in your house like a like a snow globe or something and you want to try that out um, you can use the same principle with other glass objects so when I painted this there was a window behind me with um, a cross in the middle of it you know like windows how they have like a crossy thing in the middle sometimes so that reflection showed up on all of my still life pieces so it makes it look more realistic if they have similar shiny spots, similar reflections, okay? So anyway, I'm not expecting you to do this. I'm just showing you how this principle can be applied to other areas of art later on. So this, I used watercolor, okay? Now, um, the white, if you have a white watercolor, it doesn't really show up so great. Um, Maybe yours does, but mine doesn't really, even if you have a white. So if you have like a white paint pen or white acrylic paint or a temper paint or some kind of other paint at home, you could maybe go back later and add these on top. But since most of you probably don't, what I want you to do, I'm going to show you how to draw these with um, just, just leaving that space blank to begin with so that you don't paint over that white part to begin with. And then you don't have to worry about finding other kinds of paint, okay? So hopefully you have enough time to go grab some bottle tops and start drawing your bubbles. All right, this one almost looks too big. I might try to do it this way. So how I'm gonna do it is do like this. 
go around just kind of lightly, okay? Oops, let me put this down so you can see it better. It's getting too shiny, don't you know? Okay, and then I'm going to put a littler one and I'm going to overlap it. Go ahead and draw it on top of the other one because if this bubble's in the front, you would see this one in the front and then you would see that line in the back because they're see-through, right? I might do another one that size because it's a good size. Let's see what size this one is. It's about the same size as that other cap. Uh, I might draw it here. Actually, maybe over here. Turn this upside down and do a little one. I don't think I'm going to draw anything blowing the bubbles this time, but we'll see. Do one more big one, like going off of the page, that you make it interesting, you know? The high school art teacher at Trinidad High School, her name is Jen Riley, and she told me it's nice if you can go off the page sometime because it disrupts the boundary and like takes your art out beyond, you know? Yeah, that's pretty good. I think maybe something in this corner. What do you guys think? Is that pretty good? I'm going to do another couple little ones. I'm doing a lot. You don't have to do this many. I just wanted to do a lot. not as great as my other ones. All right. All right. Okay, so we got a good start. And then what's kind of cool about this is you can really turn it whatever direction you want um, later on, you know? I'm going to do another one right there. Maybe one more. Maybe a little one. Just looks like it needs something more interesting over here. All right. Okay, so there we go. So now we need to decide where our light source is going to come from. So we don't want, do we want light coming from up here or the side? How do we want to do that? And then we're going to draw it in, okay? So we don't paint on that part. So I'm going to have my light source come from the side. So I'll start by doing that, all the bubbles. And then I'm going to try it when I'm painting with watercolor to not paint on that part. So I'll just paint around it. And if you accidentally paint over, that's fine. Um, you can maybe see later if we can find some white paint or something. So I'm kind of off the page, so I can't really do anything. Okay, but maybe that's not all, the only one. Maybe we want to put one like in the opposite corner or something. Maybe there's two. Maybe I'll do one and then I'll do like a little square on top or something. Something like that. And I'll try to repeat that. You don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it, and you don't have to do the same number of bubbles. It's your art project. Okay? I mean, my philosophy with art is I give you the idea, show you how to do it, but then after that, it's your art project. So you could change it if you want. You know? And sometimes in life, when you're like an artist for a career, sometimes you have to do things to a certain extent. Like if you're getting commissioned, which means you're getting paid to do something a certain way. In that respect, sometimes you have to do what the customer wants, you know, so you get paid. But if it's just for your own personal art, you are free to do what you want, you know, because it's your artwork. I might go ahead and add like a little guy right here, but you don't have to, okay? And add a little elephant on this one. And so how I would do that is make this uh, bubble seem like it's coming down and like out of the elephant's nose, okay? 
So we're going to put um, some lines here, put some little nostrils, and then you'll lightly draw the top of the nose because you would be able to see it through a see-through bubble, right? And then I'm going to draw the tusk going this way. And then I'm just going to draw the top of the elephant, who reminds me of Dumbo all of a sudden. I'm going to put another ear over here. Again, you don't have to do this. You can always slow it down if this is too fast for you. You can put me on half speed. You can pause me. You can rewind. Oops, I want that to be white enough. I'm going to give her a cute little bow because why not? You don't have to if you don't want to. You don't even have to have the elephant on there if you don't want to. I'm just going to add her just for fun. All right. So you don't have to go into a whole bunch of detail or be an expert in elephants. You could really do any animal. Or you could even do just like, you know, um, how bubble blowing sticks work. They're like, oh, draw an ellipse and then another ellipse, which is like a long oval. And then the stick that holds it up. And then you know how they've got these little rivets if you've ever gotten bubbles before at the store? You could even draw something like that and have the bubble coming out like that way if you want. You know, I might do that on the next one because I want to do a heart shaped one. Okay, so something like that would work too. Anyway, all right, and so the next step for this one would be to get a, your watercolors set up. And what I usually do with my watercolors is I usually take like an old like yogurt or sour cream or some kind of plastic tub that nobody really cares about. And I fill that with my paint water because if you use your mom's good cups or your dad's good cups, grandma's good cups, etc., they're not going to like it if they're left with this paint all over it, right? So, um, I even get mad at myself because sometimes I'll grab a nice cup and I'll forget that it doesn't come off very easily. So, I'll usually do that. Alright, so you get your watercolors. Um, and this is what I would do. I would start with as dark of a blue line around the outside as you can. Like you can add other colors because like say there's uh, these bubbles are going towards like a hot pink um, pool toy or something like that. So it's reflecting a little pink in there. So you can really make bubbles whatever color you want. You can even make a rainbow if you want. But for now I'm going to do mine with a dark blue outline um, and I'll show you why. So here's my blue. I know yours looks a little different. That's okay. I'm going to just add a little bit of water and stir, 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 because the less water and the more uh, pigment you pull up, the darker it's going to be. That's almost like not enough water, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Okay? If you mess up, it's okay. No biggie. It's just fun. So now I'm outlining this bubble the best I can. It's okay if it's not perfectly circular because the audience gets the idea. Alright, then let that dry for a little bit. Not too long, but just a little bit. I think I've probably said this to you before, but when I was little, um, they used to sell these watercolor paint coloring books. And they already had pigment on it, like the powder that makes the color. It was already on there. So all you had to do was get a wet paintbrush and add water. And then you could have, uh, then all you had to do was add water for all of them. And it was really cool because you could do watercolors without having 
a pizza at home, which I thought was. I think they still have them in some places, and you can use a Q-tip to do it if you want. But anyway, so why I brought that up? Why'd you bring that up, Miss Jones? Well, the reason is because if you put some thick glue on the outside for a minute, you're leaving some extra pigment there that you can pick up with just water later, okay? And that's what we're going to do. So after I'm done outlining, I'm going to go back with just a wet brush, nothing else, and drag that color, okay? In fact, I'll show you right now just in case you're pressed on time. And I would also um, remember to avoid painting those spots that you set aside as reflections, okay? So now I just have a wet brush, and I'm just going to go along the side, kind of overlap the blue a little bit, and bring it out a little bit. See how it's super light? There's just enough blue in there to make it spread out a little bit, okay? Because you, because bubbles are generally pretty see-through, right? But you can see the outside of them, like to know that there's a bubble there, right? So that's what we're doing. Because bubbles are mostly see-through. But, they do have kind of a little bit of a color, enough that you can see where it is. But mostly the color is reflections of other things around it that have color because they're pretty clear. Right? Oops. It's okay. Oops, I guess I'll do that too. When they're overlapping, it's a little harder to do this because you don't want to accidentally drag paint into the other bubble. And you don't have to fill the, thing, the whole thing with color because it's invisible, right? The bubbles are too <laughs> Alright. Okay, so, I mean, you can take all the time you want on this part, but I'm going to add a little bit of color to mine, just a little bit. Let's see if I can find a good color. I'm going to add a little bit of pink. Like, pretend there's like a big pink. I don't know. Uh, flamingo yard toys or something next to this elephant. <laughs> Sounds silly, but hey, go with it with me for a minute. So they're reflecting the pink because there's something pink nearby, right? Not a whole lot of pink because it's just nearby, but a little pink. So we're just going to add a little scotch of pink, a little bit. closer so you can see it maybe a little better. And if it seems like there's too much color in one particular area, just add some water. Add some water, spread it out a little bit. Like this almost looks like the blue is too dark, the blue that I chose, so I'm going to see if I can add some water to thin it out a little bit. Whoop! We'll fix it. start. So I'm just going to keep going and doing the same thing with all these. I'm just adding water to these at this point because they already have the blue pigment for the outside. So I just need to drag it in there. I kind of like to do a circular motion so that I can keep any streaks that end up on there a little bit on the round side, you know? A little bit more pink. Okay. 
And ah, oh, while I'm doing the pink, I am going to do this bow some pink down here. Alright, yeah, you couldn't see what I was doing, sorry. Just add a little pink to that elephant's bow right there. Just for fun. Really hard to get these bottom ones not colored in when they're on a little painting. Oh, I got that pink in here, huh? Sorry, I'm not talking much because I'm concentrating. So I'm going to keep going and finish this with you, and then I will take a quick break from this project and show you how you could maybe do hearts, if you felt like doing hearts instead. So if you'd rather do hearts and you don't like the circles, you can fast forward to that part. It's just my initial blue, so I don't have to be too detailed or perfect. There's a lot of bubbles. I chose to do a lot. Probably too many bubbles. <laughs> but it's fine. Everything's fine. So, I guess the moral of this lesson is try to keep the reflections consistent. Use caps and cups and things around your house to draw perfectly, or well, close to perfectly, circular items like bubbles. Um, and a good tool to have as an artist is are both white pens and black pens that work really well. Um, on top, like acrylic pens, you know what I mean? So you could sign your name in black and um, so you can add highlights. So that's why it's nice to have like a white Sharpie or acrylic pen, I mean, not Sharpie, I don't think they make white Sharpies, but um, acrylic pens they do.
Oops, I went over the white by accident. Whoopsie daisy. Circular motion. Okay, now I just gotta add know, some pink to these. Fix the areas that look weird with the blue. Some of them do. Just a little bit of pink on the side. But then you don't have to put the pink. You can even you don't have to put a color at all, but if you want to do a different color, like you could do like yellow, orange, green. You could really do any color on the side. Which is kind of cool because it makes the artist wonder like what was over there that was so pink in the reflection? You know? It's a mystery. Oh, just going to finish the uh, old elephant there. Oh, we gotta paint the elephant and the little thing from the eyes. If you've ever seen Dumbo, the story about the circus elephant, then you would understand what's going on here. But if not, it's okay. I'm gonna outline it with black because I actually don't have a gray. But we're going to pretend this is a dark gray. It's called something. Capiche? My alpha is nowhere near perfect, but you get the idea. I don't remember what color I have been, or not Bambi, Dumbo had, so I'm going to make them blue, I think, so they just look nice with the uh, bubbles, if they go together, you know? Alright, there we go, that's the gist of it. How? to paint acrylic, I mean not acrylic, watercolor, bubbles. Woohoo! Now, let's bruise a little. Sweet. Okay, the next thing I want you to do requires more paper for me, so let me see if I can find another sheet for you. Oh good, this one has paper in it. Okay. Alright, let's say, hypothetically speaking, that you would like to do heart shaped ones. So just got paint all over my good painting. Um so I mean there's a lot of ways you could do this if you want to get creative or think outside the box. You could have two people, two animals, with just their lips here and the, um, the bubble wand and then have bubbles coming out and they could be in the shape of hearts if you want. Or you could have like an elephant or you could have pretty much any little character that you can think of or that you could be good at drawing over there. In fact, why don't I do a note? Just for fun, I'm going to draw a little happy gnome, because you know I like gnomes. So, all right, I'm going to do a girl gnome. And, let's see. Uh, 
that pronounce is totally the wrong direction. Why don't you guys tell me? My nose looks bad. Okay, that's a little better. It's a little sideways nose. And then she's got her hat. Here. For that, I'm going to do braids. And how I do that is just a couple ovals that overlap. And then on the other side, I do them facing the other way. And then a little hair thing at the bottom. That nose is subpar. Let's fix the nose. What the heck were you thinking, Jones? The nose is so bad. Why? Why is this so hard? I think I have it going like the totally wrong angle. I feel like it should be going that way. There we go. That was a problem. But we don't want to see the eyes. So you don't get to see the eyes on the nose. There we go. Sorry. Artists change their minds sometimes. And that's okay. Alright, I got my gnome with her hat. And what if we want her to be blowing bubbles in the shape of a heart? So we're going to give her like a little dark spot right there to show that her mouth is open and it's, she's trying to blow a bubble. So we're going to put a wand here. Then we'll have her holding it. I'm going to draw like, her arms not weird looking. But I kind of didn't succeed. <laughs> there we go. Alright, she's blowing a bubble. And it looks like a heart. You don't have to do the gnome. That seems like a lot of work, right? It was. It took me a little while to figure it out. But all of these could be bubbles that she has blown. And she's happy about it. Like she's really happy. All right, ignore the gnome. The rest of it is pretty cute. <laughs> kind of messed up my my gnome. Sad day. We'll paint over that because it's a mess. All right, so we want the highlights on the same side. So we're gonna do all those the same. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to add any more highlights. Maybe the sun's over here shining down. No? Something like that. Let's go she has another hand, isn't she? Maybe this hand could be holding the bubble bottle. Yeah, looks like a bubble bottle. Alright. Let me get my colors. I really want her to be blowing red bubbles this time. So, the outline with red, pink, blue, whatever color you want. I'm choosing red. That doesn't mean you have to choose red.
There we go. So reminder, we're just outlining them. We're not coloring them in yet. So you want them to look realistic. I mean, not that hard shaped bubbles are realistic because they're really not, but you want them to look bubble quality. There we go. Let that sit for a minute before I go attack it with water. I think this gnome needs a hat pretty badly to cover up all of my mistakes that I made. Even adults make mistakes, huh? I do all the time. My children. Alright, so now I'm going to go back with just water and overlap that red a little bit so I can bring that pigment slightly in to my heart shaped bubbles. kind of overlap the white part on that one. So try not to do that unless you've got a white pen or something you can go back over with layer, you know? Otherwise it's pretty much going to stay there. <laughs> So some of these, they just look like an outline of red with pink in the middle. So I'm going to go back and kind of add a little bit dark or paint to the side. So at least it has some depth. There we go. Paint the background if you want to. I just have her like standing on the road. Ready to rock. I'm using brown to paint the red. She's a good girl and she's not blowing bubbles in her house. Making her mom mad. <laughs> or dad, or grandma, or aunt, or uncle, or friend. I don't think she needs a pink nose. Mm, pink dress. And yellow hair. I call her bubble bottles. It's like all colors, huh? Maybe green? I've seen a lot of green ones lately. Green bubble bottle. This will be green. Alright. 
So, hopefully you picked one or the other. You got to enjoy making some bubble syrup. Can you tell that bummer? You could have done like an elephant or something with bubbles. You could have skipped the elephant and just done bubbles. You could have done a gnome blowing heart shaped with puzzles. Or bubbles, not puzzles. Bubbles, kind of like uh, My Little Mermaid, that one that I did. And I want to show you one more thing before I end this lesson. Um, oh, my picture does not want to stay. Stay put, Ariel. Um, there was a time that I had kids that had acrylic paint. Or if you have like colored pencils or paint markers or something, you could also do them on black paper. This paper is actually white and I painted it black acrylic. But if you just have black paper, like construction paper or something, you can just outline your circles with um, white colored pencil or um, or just white acrylic paint. And then it comes out really neat. It looks like shiny, super shiny bubbles. Okay? So we did these and these. I'm going to show you those. Okay. So hopefully you had a good time drawing bubbles today. And um, I hope to see you guys next time. I hope you have a fabulous Valentine's Day. I'm sorry you couldn't be there today. My, my school, ha uh, Trinidad, had a work day today, so I can't be there. But I'm with you in spirit, and I hope you guys stay warm and safe this weekend and have fun with art. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.